Beginning Ye 2.0, part 4 of 15, we're going to start working in our back end. What we're going to do today is we're going to extend our active record with a new model that can be used by all the other models. We're going to add our asset bundles, which we've done before, but we're going to do it to the back end. And then we're going to modify the layout view so that uh, we start building our menu system. And we're going to modify the index view so that we get some useful information on our page. And then we'll modify the site controller to query the database uh, to pass that information to our index page. Well, that's a lot to do, so let's get started. Extending the active record by creating a new model. All right, we're going to create a new, we're going to, actually what we're going to do is we're going to extend the active record by creating this new model, ye active record PHP. So just create a new file, and in that file you would put all of this because, uh, we're going to have a false and true flag, and we're going to have a gender change, and we're going to have our timestamp behaviors um, and our blameable behaviors. And then we need to be able to get our gender options and our flag options for our uh, forms. So that's basically what that uh, form is going to do. Adding the asset bundles. Well, we've done this before, so uh, pretty simple. You can just copy the uh, app asset and index asset from your front end assets up to your back end assets. But what you might want to do is you might want to uh, change the um, CSS files and JavaScript files and things like that in your index asset. Uh, you know, that is where I added this sparklines.js right here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Of course, if uh, depending on the template that you're using for your back end, uh, you'll want to uh, check out their CSS on that and uh, perhaps add that to your CSS file uh, list so that uh, you have that, uh, you might want to put that in app asset here so that uh, that asset comes up, uh, let's see, yeah here it is, style CSS is what I have, so uh, I may have made some modifications to the style CSS, uh, but you will want to do the same thing for yours. Modifying the layout view, we start building our administrative menu. First things first, uh, we have to uh, get our CRUD generator. We have our models, but we need a CRUD generator for different uh, models. So we're going to do a, uh, a search and a back-end controller for our products controller. And, of course, you hit preview once all that's done and as you can see everything's unchanged for me you'll see a create and it'll be created and just uh, generate your new uh, controllers and your new crud so that everything is in there uh, do that for each of your product types uh, product uh, let's see product uh, so we have different ones. We have product medias, products, product categories, product types, product option combination, groups. You know, you can do it for all of them. Uh, and then do a search for each one as well. Um, notice that the model class uh, has to have the fully qualified class name. So I use common models for mine. Basically the same thing for your search model class. And your controller class has to be a back-end controller so that it knows where to put everything. Okay. Now, 
Now, we're in our main layout, in our back end view, and we wanted to create these drop down. Actually, what we have here is we have this is all a drop down <clears throat> for our products. So we have product categories, product types, our products, our product medias. Um, all this for right now is what we're going to have in our drop down for our menu. So our menu will look something like this. So we have products and we have product categories, product types. We can go here and it will tell us that we have nothing in our categories. Uh, we have nothing for our different types yet. So we have nothing in there. It's not finding any results. Okay. Uh, these are our, going to be our little information boxes here, status boxes, what's going on, how, how many customers do we have, uh, how many orders have we processed today, um, what our profit is uh, to year to date, and our profit today, how many active campaigns for our marketing, our marketing campaigns, different things like that. Uh, we're going to do that. So let's take a look at modifying the index view. We want some useful information on the page. Our index page now. So here's our index page. And we have some we can find out how many visitors if we have a hit counter of some sort or you can do it through a database add a new table to hold the IP addresses and then count your unique IP addresses for the day um, but we need to know how many customers we have as you can see here I have a customer count coming back I have orders coming back from our <clears throat> or coming in from our um, site controller so that's that'll be the last thing we do is our site controller and uh, we have some different things so a campaign count how many active campaigns do we have uh, you know, how many what is our abandoned cart rate uh, things like that it's just some in interesting information okay Modify the site controller. We need some data for our new status boxes. Now, we need to be able to get our data coming out of our site controller going to our site index page. So we need to know how many customers we have. So the customer count is a customer model and we want to find a count for that so it'll just bring back a, a number for us then we want to find out how many orders we have where our order status is a one in this case I, I have not really kind of set that up yet uh, but we'll see uh, then we need to know how many visitors we have and we have not I've just said zero at this point uh, because I don't have a hit counter or a uh, database I'm not using a table that will uh, give us back the IP addresses uh, and, and be unique and things like that. So there'll be a, a lot of stuff that we're going to need to do there to, in order to get that. Uh, we wanted to get today's products uh, or today's profit for the year to date. Uh, right now I'm just getting order details and find all, but we'll do some math that sort of thing so that it uh, gives us our profit for the year to date and our total profit uh, for today uh, basically the same thing we need to do some math to get that and then we get a campaign count so we get a count of all of our campaigns 
and then we render it and return an index to the index page and we return this array a customer account orders property year to date a profit year to date today profit and campaign count and all of that goes over to our index page and that gives us what we need for all that data coming back right here on our index page. It's just some useful information.